Hello. Okay, so today I'm going to be playing with milk jugs a little bit. I did a dirty pour over milk jugs that were mel melted that I saw Michelle Edenhouse do on Mickey Art. And I got a lot of messages from people asking me how I did the milk jug thing, how I broke it down and melted it. And so I thought I would lean over here and drop stuff. So if you don't know what I'm referring to, this is the painting I'm referring to. And you can see the little textured pattern that's all over it. And this piece has not sold yet. However, that's what all of this is, is the cut up milk jugs. So I figured why not do a tutorial and show you how to do the milk jugs. So we'll set that aside. Basically what we're going to do is cut up the pieces and we lay them on a pan and you end up with a sheet of plastic. And I've already attached this one to a canvas board. So again, you can see that's all of that. <clears throat> this is all milk jug that was melted in the oven. And then I attached it with epoxy. I love that sound. It's so weird. So that being said, uh, it probably takes three to four milk jugs per sheet. I mean, you could do more or less. It depends on what you're looking for. And here is all the pieces I've already got. This is a HDPE2 um, ice cream bucket. And I'm literally, you just cut it into little pieces. I do it while I'm watching TV because I don't have anything else to do. Why not? And so I just figured I'd show you what I'm doing. So first thing first, I these are cut co scissors. I am not sponsored. I'm just saying these are some badass scissors. These will cut through bone, so I don't have a problem using them on this. It does tend to take a little bit. Their ring here you can take this ring, cut it into bit, bits and pieces, and put it in the the bucket with everything else. Is typically what I do. So I start by cutting the handle, and I usually will cut it from top all the way to the bottom, and then I'll come here on the side. I don't know if you can see that very well. Very loud. And then I will cut from side to side to release the label end. However, you still have the inside part here that you have to cut. So again, I go into the center. This usually takes both hands. Sorry about the noise. It's part of, you know, cutting milk jug, I guess. Anyhow. Once you've got it cut, you got separate pieces. Then I just kind of dismantle it like I you know, I guess you would dismantle anything. And I cut from the top to the bottom because the bottom is um, usually thicker. So just cut, separate it, and put the pieces to the side. And I do that until the entire jug is dismantled or cut, separated, whatever word you want to use. cut all my pieces together so that I can start making my strips. So I'm going to bend you down just a little maybe. There we go. Oh, well, my head's, my head's half gone. I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess it doesn't matter if my head's cut off. So you just cut it into pieces. Once it's cut into pieces, and I'll usually do all of them at the same time. Um, and so I have to do the hard ones first. Cutting, disassembling them is the hardest part for me. 
other that other than that the bottom is the hardest part so I'm going to put you on hold for a moment and I'll be right back to show you how once I have enough how to cut the strips be right back we're moving right along this is utterly time-consuming oh that one was gonna be bad that was gonna be really bad um, yeah I'm not good I'm not good with the pun game this is punny though very punny uh, I know I know I'm I know I, I'll stop I'll stop that was terrible I'm so sorry sorry Wow, I cannot talk today. This is taking so long. Okay, it's really probably not taking that long, but it just seems like it. I've got a trash bag in my lap so that I can not have to worry about where the strips are going. It's hitting the edge of the trash bag and going in the trash can and the bucket is in the trash or trash bag not trash can so you know I'm back okay I had to take a day or so off um, from doing the milk jugs because I cut so many in one day I ended up with blisters where are you there you are on my fingers from pushing so hard on the scissors. So I probably won't be doing that many milk jugs again. I think I ended up doing like 14 or 15. Anyway, I'm getting the kitchen ready and I will bring you back in just a few minutes to show you how to melt the milk jug pieces into the flat sheet. And I'll see you in a few minutes. And we're back. Now we're in the kitchen. Okay. So I told you that I would show you how to um, take the milk jug pieces and turn them into a sheet. So what I do is I take just a regular baking sheet, burnt on the bottom, whatever, and I put parchment paper, parchment paper, to line the sheet. Now I'm going to change the angle so you can see what I'm doing down here rather than just me going and then you can't see it. So give me one second. Okay, so I have a stack of baking sheets here. So what I'm going to do is just take a handful of the milk jug pieces and you just kind of want to spread it out. You don't want any of it to be touching the metal of the pan. It can be as thick or as thin as you want it to be. I'm pretty careful about it not touching my metal baking sheet because I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it for life. Do you know what I mean? So you can have as much or as little. Um, Face. You want to kind of make sure, at least on the outside edge, that there's some touching everywhere so you don't have like a huge gap on one side. But as far as having some of the, the pieces 
open on the middle. You kind of want some if you're going to use it as a strainer. You don't have to use it as a strainer. I like the idea of, you know, straining the paint through it. I think it'd be really nice to have, you know, that kind of decoration. So I pretty much just kind of lay it out. And I can take some back out. And I just play with it until it, you know, looks as full as, as I want it to. Which I'm being anal retentive right now, I think. One there. Get a couple bigger pieces here. Just to make sure they're all touching. I want one solid piece. Well, solid on the sides. It doesn't really matter because it's going to change direction slightly anyway. So then you take another piece of parchment paper and you just lay it over the top. doesn't matter if it goes over the pan or not. I have heavy cookie sheets. This is three cookie sheets and I just lay it right on the top just like that to keep the pressure on it. I don't think I want that little one on there. Maybe I wanna probably use the big one first. These are pretty sturdy, pretty heavy. There we go, that's better. And I put all three of them on there because you want some weight. As soon as you start to heat the HDPE2, you're looking at, I don't know, some warp. So once you have them set the way you want, you want some weight on the top of it. Um, Cause as soon as the HDPE starts to heat up, it'll kind of, it, it doesn't necessarily melt. It just warms it and allows it to compress against the other pieces and they become one piece. Um, however, as soon as you take it out of the oven, it tends to warp a little you get a little bit of wavy, whatever. I don't prefer that. So, the more weight I put on it, the better. Once you have it, you know, stacked the way you want it, uh, the temperature I turn on about 375 degrees Fahrenheit in my oven. You open the door and you put it in and leave it in there. For my oven's preheated, just so you know. Okay. Alright. And that's it. From now, we just wait for. I'm back again. I checked on it and it's not quite got enough pressure on it. So I took the two smaller cookie sheets off and I'm gonna put on just a Pyrex baking dish on the top of the cookie sheet that's on the top of it, just to give it a little more weight because this is definitely heavier than the other two cookie sheets. Okay, so I also turned the fan on. I'm not smelling anything when it comes to melting HDPE2. However, you just because you can't see it and smell it doesn't mean there's not fumes in the air. So I turned the fan on and I'll come back and check on it in about 15 minutes. The timer has gone off. Let's see what we've got. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm gonna put you on hold for one second. Hi there. How are you doing today? Ha ha ha. <laughs> this is the angle I have to get at to show you guys what the milk jugs look like when they come out of the oven. I'm not sure how much closer I can get you. So, how you doing? How's your day? How's your day going? Mine's a little hot. I'm leaning on an oven that's like 375 degrees. So I'm gonna get up now and see if I can show you what's going on. My timer still has about two and a half minutes left to it and we're gonna pull it out and check on it anyway. Just to give you guys an idea of what it'll look like. Hold on one second.
Okay, so we take that. Ah, hold on one second. I take the weight off, but it's decided it wants to stay. Let's try this one more time. Oh, that's what happens when it sticks to your pan. You can see it. A couple spots. Anyhow, this is what ah, it should look like. Can you see it? Can you see that it's clear? And since it's stuck to my pan, let's just put all that back in there. Grab another sheet of parchment paper. Oh, come on. You can also see that it's starting to get white to it. And apparently there is something grabbing my parchment paper. So, take a sheet, Ooh. put the pan right back on the top, put the Pyrex back on the top, and let's scooch it back a little. I'm going to come back down and say, how are you doing? Yeah. Okay. So you saw how clear it is. If you let this set for about 10 or 15 minutes, it'll start to thicken up again. And we'll see if we can get a better look when it's done. Okay. So you can kind of hear it crackling. Okay, and as you see, you can see it's kind of shrinking again. So this is about the time that you want to put everything back together. Hold on. Okay, so this is when, let's back that out a little bit. Come on, back out. There we go. This is about the time that you want to, I don't know, pay attention a little because you can hear it. You can hear it kind of solidifying again. So it went from, you know, all this funky frosted looking, oh, let's do this one, that you can almost see through. And it turns clear when you heat it up. It's only been in there about 20 minutes. And you can hear it. So at this point, you leave it set like this for about 15 minutes. Let it kind of cool off a little bit. And then we'll come back and show you what we have. Oh, let's lift you up a little bit. And this is what we're left with. Just a little see-through, has little hairs or, you know, whatever, flat piece of milk jug that you can then, and I'm going to use a canvas, I already did, but it, I already did this one, I just need to finish resining it, resining it. Then you can put it on the top of the canvas. Cookie sheet is pretty close to the same size of this canvas, there's a little that hangs off no big deal so I would prop this with a couple cups oh. so if you don't want the rounded bottom you know because you're gonna pour on it and it's gonna drip through and you don't want the yep that thing you don't want that space that big of a space take a couple shot glasses Lay the shot glasses down and in whatever way you lay them down, you take this, you just lay it on the top. I would probably use four and space them out, but I only have three right here. And then when you do your pour, you just pour over the top of it. The paint will seep through the holes and come down on the bottom of the canvas and it will be beautiful. In fact, I'm going to do a dirty pour like that and hoping in the next couple days, we'll see what happens. I will tell you as well to be very careful with this. I mean, you can bend it, but you can see how fragile, 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 look at it. Oh, see, and it can pull off. So you want to be careful with the bits and pieces that are, you know, just on there by a string. 
So when you store it, you want to store it flat, store them on top of each other and make sure that no, nothing heavy is on top of them after they're at this stage. Other than that, I think I've done everything I was going to show you in this tutorial. If you come back in a couple days, I will do a dirty pour on top of it and show you how that looks and how it turns out and we'll have some fun with that. So thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. Um, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of when I upload another video. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful evening and remember, life is art. Bye.